Well, I got to the job first day of framing and I can't find the blueprints. And you gave me two paper copies. And I was right. like, dang, maybe I gave them to the plumber. Right. Called him, he didn't have them. Anyway, luckily I called the building inspector and I said, hey, did I give you a set of plans? They're like, yeah. I was like, can I borrow them <laughs> just for a day? I'll bring them back, I promise. And uh, you know, I couldn't see her, but I could tell her eyes were rolling. And anyway, she said to come get them. So I did. Okay. So we have the inspector's copy here that we're gonna, we're gonna rent. Maybe we'll rent them. And then I gotta give them back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's been a few days, but we're back on site to start the framing and we're checking out our slab. And what I can tell you is that for the conditions that we had when we poured this thing and when we were finishing it, it turned out awesome. It's pretty smooth. It looks pretty flat and level. Arlo and Ray did come back and cut these control joints in it later. So we're gonna get this thing cleaned up. Our lumber is coming soon. Jamie had to go get the plans. He forgot them. That's a normal Monday and we're gonna get cranking. Yeah, John texted me like 30, 40 minutes ago. All right. And also the trusses, the four trusses are coming today. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I was like, oh, crap. I hope oh. we have them because if not, we're... <laughs> Going on. People want to hear your sweet, deep voice again. Sweet, deep voice. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> We're checking out our washer situation for our anchor bolts, and I want to drill like a three-quarter hole. So we got a little wiggle room to align the plates flush and all that. With that size washer, we can't really do that because it would go right through the hole. I've also got those, so I'm thinking I'm going to double washer it so we get a giant washer and we can drill a little larger hole for these. We have some of those, so I would base the hole size on your washer size. You don't want to drill too big a hole and have your washer sink right through it. But if you can drill a little bigger, you got a little wiggle room, which is great. It's time to start framing, and we're going to establish what we're going to call a reference corner. The length of the house is an odd dimension, so it's going to end with an odd stud spacing. So we've picked the front corner to start 16-inch layout from the, from the front to the back, and our floor trusses will lay out on that same type of layout. It's actually 19.2s, but every 8 feet, they will line up, and I want my sheathing to line up on that 8-foot joint. That's why we're doing it. Jason, you got that? Yep. Reference. RC. That's the one. Right there. Coming Dale Jr.'s on today, boys. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> Good boys. Turn left. No. You think all, the, all these walls today? Yeah, we're going to build all the walls and today. Sheet? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on. You want a Forstner bit? Sure. There you go. Yeah. That's a bit right there. I'm running a pass load framing nailer here and Jason's got another one. We've got galvanized nails in this one because we're going through pressure treated. He's got smooth brights, which are interior going through the top plate. Uh, I'm kind of splitting the difference because the pressure treated plate is a little thicker. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna hit you with this if that touches me. <laughs> I'm just going to eat Funyuns. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hang on. We missed a stud. I started from that end and that end and didn't get to the middle. Nice. Just go ahead and jig it up. Jig it up, folks. I mean, I hope you test fitted the bottom plate. Looks good. Bolt it down. Homeowners here. Kick it a little. Also today I'm gonna to be trying out a prototype of a lower cost version of the Perkins Builder Belt, yet improved. So we've got some improvements to the belt. We're gonna to continue to make it better as we wear it and know what parts are gonna fail before others or whatnot. And this one, we were able to find a less expensive buckle that seems like as good a quality and that was one of the major cost contributors on this other belt 
And if you're really wondering why I'm doing this today, it's because Arlo forgot his tool bag on framing day. I so. brought all my tools, but I, I left my tool bag <laughs> yeah. at home. I don't know what I was He's going to wear my old one. I'm going to wear the new prototype. We're going to work. For our mud seal gasket right here, instead of using the foam seal sealer, we're using the Lexel with the Cobra nozzle, which is this invention that the guy that made Lexel invented. It gives you a nice wide bead. We're doing two beads of that, and it's just going to squish out to give a solid gasket and it's even squeezing out the sides. Cobra! We're using two by four studs here, 16 inches on center, and that's what the code is if you have another floor and a roof load in this area for a wall like this. And we're gonna use the Zip R sheathing, which has half inch layer of rigid foam. That's really gonna make this wall perform just about as good as a two by six wall once we have our conventional insulation plus that. couple things I'm keeping in mind as I'm putting these studs in is that all this material is not perfect. In fact, probably none of it's perfect. So I'm making sure to align all the crowns of these boards the same way so that the wall isn't wavy in the finish. And in this case, I'm going crown up. And if any of these boards are just really terrible, like really crowned or really bowed, that one's really nice. We're just gonna throw them aside and we'll cut them up for cripples and short stuff because it won't matter as much for that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah this was a good one. <laughs> what in the world? We can just screw that back together, right? Wow. <laughs> that grain just totally let go. We can screw it back together. You know, Lexo. That one's cut it up. Lexo? Oh, it's right on a cripple. Right on a stud. Right on a stud. Oh, jeez. Uh, that's problematic. Here's our first window, <laughs> which is not the normal for us, and Ray has selected a really straight stud to go against the jack. And we did that on both sides. We're gonna do that on all the window openings so that our window opening's nice and square and straight, parallel, the window goes in nice. Hey, does this front wall need headers in the window openings or no? It does, it does. In essence, all of the exterior walls are load bearing. Normally you For would have- For the roof? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, almost always you would have two walls that are and two that aren't, right? right. Because the gable end. On this one, it's got oh, a hip yeah, roof a hip all, all the way, way around. around. And even though there are girders that spread the load primarily on two sets of wall, two walls, yeah. there are still roof loads going okay. to the other. So I think we just- Man, that was a long them. answer. I needed yay. That was the short version. Oh. <laughs> I abbreviated, condensed it for you. Since Jamie's being a manager today, I thought I'd go ahead and give him an iPad and a hard hat, even though he's not really out here. Let's see. Okay. Um, how do you turn Use it your on? finger like that. I've been using one, it's a little older. It's got two dials, one on each side <laughs> and the screen. The little thing moves across. <laughs> Seriously, he's not even joking. <laughs> that's an edge sketch. Oh yeah that's, yeah, that's what I make my blueprints from. It's, you draw straight lines really good. Good news and some bad news. Yeah, what's that? Good news, it's only 30 minutes till lunchtime. Bad news, yeah. we need headers and- Cut guy. They're at the bottom of the hey. stack. All right, cut guy's got it. If you know, you oh. know. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you I'm know. not the cut guy, I'm the lad. You're the dude. both cut and uh, All right, just, yeah, we'll just shuffle all this somewhere. A lot of these headers, for whatever reason, fall a little low to the studs. It's probably because we've crowned the studs up. And we want to be really particular though that we flush them. So I'm just getting my claw in there, making sure we're flush on the face here. Before I run either a screw or a nail in here, I'm going to run a screw to kind of suck everything tight. And uh, then I can nail it off, have everything flush. BCO that way. I know what Arlo's thinking about. 
beer. Yeah. That way. <laughs> He's aligning the plates yeah. based on the direction to the local pub is that this, way. We might need this <laughs> is that really what it means? Yes. <laughs> I swear that's what it means. BCO. <laughs> we need the plate goes that way. We need a you got to know where your pubs are. I mean, I know where it is. I just didn't expect to see it on a board telling me to put the board that way. You never know what to expect around I got here. it right, though. This video is brought to you by Factor, and they deliver fresh, never frozen, and dietitian approved meals right to my step. And I've been down in their smoothies, too. How'd you like that move? Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't sure where you're going with that one, but uh, it looked good. I guess for some people, planning meals and cooking meals and cleaning up after meals is their thing, but it's not my thing. I like doing this and this and then filming all that and making videos about it. So I'm super busy. I don't want to be going to the store doing dishes. So I've really been enjoying Factor. I can have a delicious and nutritious meal in like two minutes with no mess. And I've really been able to cut back on my fast food meals this spring. So I want to be in shape for the lake. I don't want to be like, and I feel better. Are you trying to ditch the dad bod or what, dude? Yeah. Chicks love it. Yeah, I don't know if they do. <laughs> Factor has 34 plus chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, so there's always something new to try. Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45 plus add ons, including breakfast items like egg bites, smoothies, and more. What I really enjoy about the Factor meals is they're not boring and bland like some other packaged meals I've had. They're all very different and I'm into wild flavors if you didn't know. I like hot stuff, I like eclectic stuff, and they have normal stuff too, but I've been really pleased with every package I've opened and that's really important. If I cook a meal and pay for it, I want to enjoy it. And finally, Factor is very flexible. You can change your plan, you can add more if you want to enjoy with loved ones, or you can skip a week if you got some special events and you're going to be out of town. So if you're like me, you have a huge to-do list and not a lot of time to cook, but you still want to eat great, just head to factor75.com and use my code Perkins50 and you'll get 50% off your first Factor box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. Got these two walls coming together here and the plates aren't flushed up exactly but i'm just going to use a toe screw and i've already hit it in once but i'm going to hit it in again uh -huh. right here at an angle yeah. you yeah. can see it just flushes everything yeah. up really nice and that yeah. matters that in the sucks. finish but that sucks yeah oh that sucks yeah. Stuff like, you don't want that <laughs> your drywall lays flat you don't yeah. want that you want that to go down the wall and no no you don't yeah. want it to be wavy like that oh no <laughs> I'm, I'm being sarcastic <laughs> That's a building inspector. We have a little bit of a difficult situation to deal with here where the end of my plate needs to be anchored to the concrete, but I've got three studs on the end of my plate leaving no place for a regular embedded anchor bolt. So I'm gonna add one of these Tapcon plus six inch by half inch concrete anchors. And I'm just kind of pre-drilling at a very steep angle, almost like a pocket screw, if you will, if you can imagine that. I'm gonna pre-drill the wood with a wood bit and then I'm gonna drill the concrete and then we're gonna lag this thing in here. We're gonna be driving these bolts with an impact wrench, and this thing is really powerful. It's powerful enough to destroy your socket set if you don't use the right type of sockets. These ones that are black, kind of coated like that, they are impact rated, and your standard chrome ones are not. They're meant for hand ratchets. That's what we've been using all day is that chrome one right there. Yeah, I've heard you guys <laughs> reaming it out. I'm glad that's not my... Is that my socket? Yeah. <laughs> You're kidding. Man.
Well, anyway, wow, the, I wonder when you're gonna realize all that you're. Just... I wasn't worried about it. I was watching. I was laughing because I was like, "Man, who's ever that is? They're screwed." <laughs> uh, didn't know it was me. <laughs> uh, anyway, these are typically like automotive. You know, I, this is what I use to change the tires and brakes on my truck, right? Uh, so that's why I have it. All right, here we go. Something interesting about the way we're framing these walls with no rigid sheathing put on them before we stand them is that there's no real strength in the wall this direction at all. You can see they just move freely. And for that reason, we do not want to put any load on top of these walls before we get them either braced really well or put that sheathing on the outside. We're going to put bracing on the inside like this so that we can still put the sheathing on the outside with the braces installed. And if you want to look on the internet, I'm sure you'll find some amazing video of a building in a storm where they didn't put the sheathing on, didn't brace it, and some storm came, the whole building like twisted and collapses in a storm. So that's what we're looking to not do here. We're going to switch to inside bracing. We're going to need you to push there, bro, Jangle. You need me to rack it? One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That definitely moves, though. That's it. Then... All right, I'm just going to keep a little pressure on it. All right, you're just gonna feel a little pressure. Yep. Oh, you got it in woodpecker mode. Hit it three times. That's showing really good right there. Yeah. I'd say hit it. Now I wanna point out that Arlo still has his old hammer. And if you remember from a previous video, we called this thing the bone daddy. That's right. Because of the bone that's sticking out <laughs> the end of it there. This thing came across on the Mayflower, I think. You can't break this hammer. In comparison, hold that up, Arlo. Look at this future Blade Runner hammer compared to that thing. I mean. Yeah. But, Tony, when they need some weight and they want to hit something new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know how you're using that thing. I don't know how you wore out a hammer. I've never even heard of that. These two exterior walls are probably the longest single sections wall we've ever done without windows and doors, which is interesting. It looks kind of plain, but it's really needed in a small space like this as far as just a wall surface to put furniture against, put a TV or entertainment center. That's the only spot they have is this outside wall. Not only that, this house was strategically designed for a neighborhood where you have another house on each side yeah. and you don't really want a view mm. of your neighbor. Right, yeah, or if you're sitting on your couch, you your don't really window. want them staring straight at you. And actually, this worked out good because there is a house on either side. It's really perfect. And we are gonna add one window to the upstairs bedroom, taking advantage of the view this direction. Oh. Uh, she See, added that. I didn't so, even know that. Well, now you know. <laughs> the homeowner was gonna add another window to this side until I shared with her how excited I was to finally build a house with an entirely blank surface. We're talking like 30 feet wide, 20 feet tall, just siding, no windows or anything. And she is all about keeping me low stress on this job. Yeah. Can you believe that? The siding will go super fast with no openings to. That's right, just get out. And we're out. gonna rent a lift, right? We sure can, like I think a basket we should. Lift. We can just, I just think we should. Up it. We've got our smoke wall assembly drawn on the floor. It's two walls with two layers of 5H drywall between them. And that drywall has to run all the way out to the inside of the sheathing on the wall here. And that's gotta go all the way, all the way up to the bottom of the roof sheathing, is that right? Absolutely, from the concrete slab to the bottom of the sheathing on the roof with zero exceptions for penetration. Zero, none. That's what he says, zero. So we're gonna try to do it. Arlo is doing some prep work for us, so tomorrow we can get going quick. He's ripping some of our Zip R sheathing down to two feet by eight feet. That way we can have a full sheet of sheathing go across our floor system from the lower walls to the upper walls once you stack that up, so that's important. He's also taping the bottom of this thing where it's gonna be about eight, 10 inches off the ground so that the foam layer is sealed. I don't know, I think that's a good idea. I don't know if that's spec on it, but we've been doing it. 
the dimensioning on our plans is kind of weird. It's like outside to center of the walls, which normally we'd do like inside to inside or something that's a hard place you could hook a tape or see a chalk line. You can't see a chalk line if you chalk it center of the wall. That's nothing. That doesn't help. <laughs> then I have to offset half of the wall thickness, you know? So we're gonna have to do a little thinking when we lay this out for the interior walls, oh, for wow. sure. That's a wrap for today. Great day. I think we're gonna be in a position where it could potentially be setting trusses by the end of tomorrow, getting the second floor going. So we're gonna to head to the house and enjoy the rest of this nice evening. Mm -hmm.